welcome back in this video I am gonna show you how to get the product data in a JSON format now why in a JSON format because we have a specific requirement where we'll be using this data that is the product data in the form of JSON okay so what needs to be done to get our Java object converted into JSON format so for that you need to add few dependencies inside your class path since we are using a maven project we just need to add a dependency in the pom.xml file and what are those dependency so the dependency group id is faster xml jackson.core and the artifact id is jackson databand with this particular version so i'm going to add this dependency one by one so this is going to be our first step for getting the java object in the json format so we are going to open our backend project remember this i am opening a backend project pom.xml file inside this pom.xml file I'm just gonna do a comment for Jackson I'm gonna copy this group ID and artifact ID I'm gonna remove this group ID this artifact ID and this version as well so for version just like how I did before I'm gonna add another property and I'm gonna call it as Jackson dot version and the version is 2.8.7 you can see it is 2.8.7 so first I'm going to add this group ID com.fasterxml jackson.core then I need this artifact ID this version would be dollar jackson dot let me open this maven dependency tag and let me show you something as you can see I added the data bind annotation but Jackson annotation is 2.8.0 so and Jackson core is 2.8.7 so this is not matching with this one so what I will do I'm just gonna copy it once again and instead of data bind I'm going to say annotations so that's why I said uh, we need to add this to dependency and I'm, as soon as I save it till it gets updated now you can notice the annotation is 2.8.7 so every Jackson dependency we have right now is 2.8.7 2.8.7 and 2.8.7 so that's the first step that you're going to do now in my next step I am going to create a JSON data controller now this controller would be inside my front end UI project so the job of that controller would be to send that Java object in a form of JSON to me okay so and I am going to add two handler method just for testing purpose right now that is all products and category ID products so I need the all products data in the form of JSON and I need products data based on its category again in the form of JSON so this is the URL which I came up and I'm gonna code this in another controller called as JSON data controller so we'll go in our front-end project we have Java resources source main Java we have this our controller package inside right click new class the name of this class I've decided is JSON data controller adding this I am gonna add our annotation at the rate controller and at the class level I'm going to say request mapping it would be forward slash JSON forward slash data so all those methods that I am going to write that would be annotated using at the rate request mapping will have JSON slash data prepended to it so here at the rate request mapping I need to get data for all the products and here the return type would be list of product so here I'm going to say get all products but from where we are going to get our product we are going to get our product from the 
product DAO that we created in the previous video. So I'm going to auto add that thing. I'm gonna give a private product DAO. And here I'm going to return product DAO dot I have a method called as list of active products. I'm gonna only return list of active products now all this error will gone if I do a control shift O and organize my import now it will ask which list so obviously I'm going to use the java dot util dot list and error is gone but as we all know till now we have been returning if uh, the model and view so if I open my page controller you can see we have been returning a model and views that's fine but here this controller is only returning the data in the form of JSON so this conversion has to happen so what I what we can do we are going to add a another annotation we are going to say just return the response body so automatically it will look for a converter that we have already added inside our class path in the backend project which is again is a part of a dependency of our frontend project so it would be automatically added inside our class path and this entire active products will be written in the form of JSON if I add this annotation called as at the rate response body similarly I'm going to add another method but here I'm going to change it as I said I want the JSON data for the category and this part would be dynamic that is category 1 products category 2 products and so on get all products by category and we can give more meaningful name we can say get products by category but here I need to use the path variable annotation since this ID is similar to this name which I am using so I can avoid the round bracket and specifying the ID that is also fine so that becomes completely optional if this and this are matching so path variable I am using and here I need to change my method name so I have another method inside my product DAO that I created that is list of active products by category and what I'm going to pass I'm going to pass that ID that we are getting from the path so this ID I'm passing and I'm returning that list of product make sure you're using at the rate response body to send that data in the form of JSON okay and the entire conversion will be taken care by our faster XML that we have added so this is what we have done so JSON data at the class level and this all products at the method level category ID products now next thing we need to test whether it is returning a JSON data or not so for that testing we are going to add another extension and that extension is postman for Chrome and rest client for Firefox so what you can do you can search for postman So you, it will get you to the Chrome Web Store. So you just open it. So this is this is basically an app, which is available as an extension for you for Chrome. So here there would be an install button instead instead of launch app. So you just click it and install it. Once it is installed, you can search for Postman and you can see. So I'm going to open this Postman app. So in the meantime, when it opens, now open the extension and put the address of the JSON data in the address bar and check for the JSON response. For, for doing this, I need to install my app on the server. So I'm just gonna go and add that online shopping app, add, finish, start this thing, look for any error on the console.
uh, postman app is up and running so here you're going to specify the context route which is online shopping forward slash json forward slash data now this is required because if you see the controller that we created has json data and then we can fetch all the product so json data forward slash all slash products and i need to press enter but here if you notice i have this one as post so what i can do i am going to change it to get okay so all the others method for our http is available here so i am going to use the get method and at the eclipse console that is getting loaded and you can see my query has been executed and if i check here in the postman i have the data available in the json format so it means our controller is working fine and it is returning data in the form of json just notice it is a collection of objects as you can see we have a array and it is an array of object but we have all the fields of our product which is returning here okay so what i can do to remove the field that i don't want okay say for example for a table where i i don't want to show description description should be shown only on a single page not on the entire page and even i don't want to show the category id or supplier id because anyways i'm going to fetch the data based on the category id so category id supplier id and active true because anyways i'm sending the active product only so how can i do that thing so for that just open your product dto okay and we are going to use another annotation that is json ignore okay control shift o if you notice it is imported from the jackson annotation so i am telling explicitly to our converter please ignore this field and don't convert it into json form so similarly i am going to add json ignore on the active field which i don't want to be converted and similarly i am not gonna also have the category id as well as the supplier id because it doesn't matter who is supplying this product to the end user the customer is going to buy the product so i am doing json ignore json ignore json ignore four times so four this for that is description category id supplier id and active won't be available here so once this is done let my app get refresh so you can see it has been refreshed here and again i'm going to query this one so it is again loading you can see the data which i have received does not have that active supplier id category id as well as the description okay similarly i am going to test for our json data for category 1/ products so it is giving me only two product that is the product number 4 and 5 which is for our laptop category now if i add two there is no product so it is giving me an empty result and for 3 that is for mobile we have iphone google pixel and oppo selfie so three active product that i have in that that one so our json data controller is working fine and we are able to see the data in the form of json so we have learned how to add json ignore on the field so that we don't get that particular data in the form of json So in my next part I'm going to show you how to add the jQuery data table plugin and how to use that plugin in our project. Thanks for watching.